love, exciting and new. My daughter says I should go on a TV show called So You Think You Can Sing? But that snarky comment aside, join me today as we go on a voyage, a voyage back to the golden age of cruising on The Love Boat. So if you're ready, come aboard, we're expecting you. So hello, all you cool cruisers. Welcome back to Freshly Squeezed Travels. I'm Kim, and if you're new here, welcome. I hope you are having a splendid day today, wherever you are. And today, we are going to compare cruising back in the day of the love boat with modern cruising today. Now, for those of you who might be too young to remember, The Love Boat was an insanely popular television program in the late 70s and early 80s. It was actually on for decades. It was an incredibly popular program. And when I was little, watching The Love Boat was the highlight of my week. I wanted to watch all the passengers get on in California and then sail off to the Mexican Riviera where all their love problems would be solved. I loved the show. Every Friday night, I would be in front of the TV waiting for it to come on because back in the day, I couldn't watch it on demand. I don't even think we had a VCR. So now that we've covered that and everyone realizes I'm old, we can move on. Now, the Love Boat TV show did a lot for the cruising industry. Before the Love Boat came on, people used to say that cruising was for newlyweds and the nearly dead. That's what people thought about cruising. But once the love boat came on the air, people started to associate cruising with glamour and romance and excitement, and it really helped popularize the cruise industry across demographics. So I'm going to compare cruising back in the days of the love boat with cruising today. And let's start with passenger capacity. Now the Pacific Princess, which is the ship that was most often used in the love boat TV series, Series, it held 650 passengers approximately. Compare that to the new Wonder of the Seas from Royal Caribbean. It is the largest cruise ship in the world and it can hold about 7,800 passengers. So over the years, cruise lines have built bigger and bigger ships. Now let's talk about embarkation. Now I don't know if this is really how check-in happened back then, but on the TV show, Passengers would just meander on at their convenience and Julie McCoy or another crew member would be there with a clipboard and they would simply check their name off. And that was it. So compare that to today where we have to get our security photo taken. We have to show our vax cards. We have to show our negative COVID tests. We have to have our carry-ons go through the x-ray machine. Check-in today appears to be a lot more complicated than it was back then. Now, once all the passengers on the love boat were on board and they were sailing away, they would have a huge ticker tape farewell. There would be hundreds of people watching the crew set sail and there would be confetti flying through the air and everyone would be cheering and everything. That unfortunately has gone by the wayside. It's very, very bad for the environment. So unfortunately, we've had to say farewell to the ticker tape farewells. Now, once you were on board the Pacific Princess, what type of enticing and exciting activities did they have for you? Well, you could look forward to shuffleboard, ping pong, and bridge. Those were three of the most popular cruise activities back in the day. Then there were a couple other very popular activities. One was hitting golf balls into the ocean. So you could just go to the back of the ship and swing your clubs and hit golf balls in the ocean. Yeah, why not? Um, unfortunately, that has also gone by the wayside because it's also very bad for the environment. I know they have created some golf balls now that are not so harmful to the environment, but the golf balls that were hit off the ships back in the 70s and 80s, they're still at the bottom of the ocean today. Then there was an activity that I have some questions about. Apparently, back in the day, skeet shooting was very, very common on cruise ships. And I just wonder, wasn't that very disruptive to the passengers on board listening to gunshots all day? And also, did they give everyone a breathalyzer test before they allowed them to skeet shoot? I think handing guests who might have been visiting Isaac down at the pool bar a loaded gun might not have been the best idea. Another 
popular thing that passengers would do on the love boat or back in the days of love boat cruising was to watch ice carving demonstrations on deck where they would come out and create beautiful mermaids or dolphins and these crazy unique ice sculptures that would generally end up at the midnight buffet. So let's talk about how far onboard activities have come over the past several decades. Today, there are cruise ships that have simulated skydiving bumper cars. You can even go ice skating in the middle of your tropical vacation. And Carnival recently introduced a ship that has a roller coaster on board. So activities have definitely evolved. So speaking of Isaac, and Isaac was the bartender on the TV show, The Love Boat, the Pacific Princess did have a few different bars that you could visit. One was the pool bar, there was Pirate's Cove, and there was the Starlight Bar. Passengers actually had a choice of a few different bars where they could grab a cocktail. Today, unfortunately, Isaac might be out of a job because now cruise ships actually have robotic bars where there are no human bartenders and your drinks are prepared by robots. And like activities, bars have also morphed and evolved on today's cruise ships. Besides the Bionic Bar that I mentioned, that's on Royal Caribbean, there are Russian ice bars that are kept at 17 degrees Fahrenheit, so you have to bundle up in furs when you go inside and get your ice cold vodka drinks. And another innovative bar that's at sea today is the Rising Tide Bar. This is a bar on many Royal Caribbean ships that will take you from deck to deck as you go up and down on the elevator bar. So bars have definitely come a long way too. Now let's move on to dining. On the Pacific Princess, passengers had one place to eat and that was the Coral Dining Room. That was their only choice and that is where they went every evening to enjoy sumptuous entrees like chicken a la king and beef wellington, followed by desserts like cherries jubilee, bananas foster, and baked Alaska. One thing I wanted to point out in this photo is look how low the ceilings are. Years ago, cruise ships used to have very low ceilings, seven or eight feet, so not good if you're claustrophobic. And in fact, if you were over six feet tall, a lot of times you could reach up and actually touch the ceiling. One of the highlights on every sailing on the Love Boat was the midnight buffet, where you would go in and there would just be food as far as you could see, things like chocolate covered fruit and fondue fountains and crab legs and everything in between. And passengers would always look forward to the midnight buffet where they would just go in and stuff their faces before they called it a night. Midnight buffets have gone away. Um, I'm not really sure why. I think it's just because there are a lot more 24 hour dining options on most modern cruise ships, but that's too bad because I wouldn't mind going to a midnight buffet. Today's passengers on cruise ships have a lot more dining options than just one dining room. I mean, they have everything from diners to Korean barbecue restaurants to high-end Mexican, Italian. There are many different options for passengers today, so they don't just have to go to the same main dining room. So I think it's clear that cruising has come a long way since the days of the love boat. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I do both cruise videos and Disney videos and I would love to have you as part of my traveling party. Also, I just wanna let you know that my next couple videos are going to be Disney related, but if you're not a Disney fan, do not worry. I will be back with cruising videos in early December. I'm taking two cruises in December and I have so many fun and exciting cruises planned. So if you don't want to miss those, be sure to ring the bell so you'll be notified of all my future uploads. And if you are a Disney fan, make sure that you follow me on Instagram because I will be posting regularly on Instagram and in my Instagram stories so you can follow my adventures. We will be there for a week and spending Thanksgiving at the Magic Kingdom. If you were a fan at the Love Boat, drop a comment and let me know. I would love to hear about your favorite memories of watching the Love Boat or your favorite episode. Episodes. Until next time, I hope you have happy and safe travels, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! The Love Boat Soon we'll be making another run The Love Boat Promises something for everyone 
set a course for adventure your mind on a new romance and love won't hurt anyone.